the gospel is good news. In that it is news as opposed to advice. Advice is what we use when, you know, life's not working out very well. And we know it. We're kind of at our wits end and we just, we have to do something different. And so we seek out advice. New parents are very open to advice. My baby will not sleep. I have not slept for a month. Oh, now my baby's sleeping in our bed. How do we get our baby out of our bed? All different kinds of advice. How are we going to plan for retirement? How best can I do my job? And we, we come to church and we get all the advice how to live a really good life. And, and finally, we find ourselves just so full of advice that, well, we're just overflowing with it. And we're so eager to give it to people who obviously need our advice. Of course, our families are the first recipients of our great knowledge and wisdom. And then, of course, just out in the general public. Now, imagine being at Dylan's and you see a situation with a mom and a, a young toddler. Having been there yourself, you just kind of know what needs to be done and needs to be said. Imagine if you said it. What kind of reaction would that poor mom have to your helpful advice? Would she say, oh, thank you? No, you're getting a fistful of ugly coming your way, <laughs> telling her what to do and how to do it. See, that's kind of the downside of advice. Uh, you know, not, not everybody wants it. Not everybody needs it. Not everybody can receive it. But even if you're ready, even if you really change is going to happen kind of a person, and, and you're, you're calling up the, the why, and you're signing up, well, change is happening, I will start my program, and, and you can completely agree that, yes, I need to follow this advice. The doctor said this, and I need to be in better shape, I'm going to do it. You can believe it with 100% of your heart. But the thing about advice is, you don't have to take it. Even if you want it, even if you believe it, you can still end up not doing it. But news is completely different. You see, news is just simply, here's what happened. It's uh, uh, more than just advice. News is, uh, well, take for example, a severe weather report. If the tornado's on the ground, it comes on television Here's what's going on. Now, you don't have to take the advice about what to do now that the weather's turned sour. You don't even have to believe it. It doesn't even matter what your feelings are or what you know about storms. Well, if a tornado's over there, it's not going to get us here. And it, it just doesn't matter about you when it comes to news because it's simply a report on reality. Now, if you choose to ignore the report then you have to come up with some kind of explanation of what just happened. You know, the, the big windstorm that we had go through on Friday, if your power went out and you go to turn on the light, you have to come up with some reason now that the, the switch isn't working. And then you have to open up your drapes and see, well, your Bradford's on the ground. And you have to have some reason. Now, if you didn't believe in weather, if you just didn't believe in tornadoes or big, strong winds then somehow you have to explain the, the reality that's in front of you. Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. It's news, not advice. Jesus of Nazareth, he lived in a town, he suffered and died and was dead. Three days later, they came looking for him to prepare the dead body. They couldn't get to him, they thought, because of the stone in front of the, the tomb. And then they couldn't get to him because he'd already gone. The, the angel left there was almost like an administrative assistant saying, well, this is the reason you can't see your boss right now. Um, you just missed him. He's on to other business. The Easter news 
is that Jesus is alive. Unfortunately, we kind of just assume a lot then about that's what the news is completely and all about. We read the headline, you know, he's risen. And we never read the rest of the story, the details and all of the the wonderful things that this now means that he has risen. In fact, we just so quickly go on to the advice. You know, now what does it mean now that Jesus has risen? How am I going to have a good marriage? How am I going to steward my money? What are the ten steps for raising kids now that Jesus is part of our our world? And, And so the church has become, in its public voice to the world, best known for its advice, not its news. And just like the poor mom at Dylan's, how does the world receive our advice? Not well. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear about how best to have a life or how best to live morally or in your marriage or how to do politics or other religions. They haven't asked. And yet the church is ready to announce our advice. Why have we done this? I'm wondering if it isn't because we just really haven't lived and read and embraced the news. If the news is Jesus has risen, keep in mind it's the headline. And now, what's the rest of the story? Isaiah the prophet, as I mentioned before, gives us so much more of the content that now that Jesus Christ has physically risen from the dead and is physically alive, the news that will forever change the world because it is news and not advice is that a new creation has now been unleashed on the world. A new page in the history of mankind has been turned. And now, death itself has been swallowed up in the body of Jesus Christ. And everybody who is with Jesus, now they too are caught up in this new created life. The church has the good news proclaimed that this death has been swallowed up and now we have a bath, we have a baptismal washing in which we become new creations in Christ Jesus. Do you not know, St. Paul said, that all of you who have been baptized into Christ were baptized into His death and we have been raised with Him in His resurrection. The news is good. You shall live even though you die. For everyone who's ever shed a tear over regret or disappointment or loss or grief, the news is those tears will be wiped away. That we grieve, yes, but not like the rest of the world. We have hope. And the hope is this, that no thing Nothing of value, no person, no dear one in our life who is now with Jesus will ever be lost. We are secure. Our things, our life, our family, our world is secure because that's what's now unleashed in the resurrected body of Jesus and it will continue on and on then till that day when our cheek is wiped dry by His hand. The good news continues. For everyone who's ever been a disgrace, a reproach to the family, an embarrassment, to anyone who feels within their heart the guilt that they have not followed the good advice of our God, that they, in fact, have gone their own way, all of us like sheep. The woman who washed Jesus' feet with her tears and dried them with her hair, she was relieved of the guilt and the shame that she was. Though the rest of the town knew her as a sinner, Jesus now knows her for all eternity as this forgiven woman 
who washed his feet. You see, the news is you are forgiven. You are set free. Death shall not touch you. Your tears shall be dried. And for everyone who's wondering why in the church people are so sad and somber and so much uptight, that's not, that's not the good news that set us free. Because our God is getting ready to throw a party. Oh yeah, there's going to be wine and not the cheap stuff, the good stuff. And there's going to be food, and there's going to be a banquet table, and everybody is at the table who's with Jesus. Nobody's lost. Nobody is like, oh, you're here. Everyone is oh, filled with joy and peace. We don't have to wait for all of these things to finally come. They are breaking in now that Jesus has risen from the dead. There is a foretaste of this meal that is to come. There is life here in this baptismal water. There are tears that have been dried. And so there will be a day when we see the Lord Jesus come again in which we say, surely this is our God. We trusted in Him, and He saved us. This is the Lord. We, we trusted in Him. Let us rejoice and be glad in our salvation. That's where all of history is going. That's the news. And the sweetest, most wonderful part of the news is that this new created life in the body of Jesus that's been unleashed on the world, it doesn't run on advice. Guess what it runs on? It runs on love. Jesus has not risen from the dead to tell us how to live a life. He came to give us one. He didn't come to put us to shame, but to take our shame away. He didn't come to put us to death and condemnation, but to pull us out and to love us. And to give us a new kind of heart. A new kind of heart that isn't running on the advice, it's running on the love. A new kind of heart that doesn't feel the necessity to give its advice to the world, but to give its love to the world. Our lives are forever changed. That's the good news proclaimed today. Amen. As we gather our confession up into one voice before our God, that this good news has come to me and I'm living in it, we will be using this manifesto confession in which the band will be singing and we will be singing with them in which we lift up our prayers as well. Because it's a 